Hey everyone, welcome back to the blog, or if you're watching on YouTube, welcome to the channel. If you are watching on YouTube, remember to head over to diabetesdietguide.com if you're interested in free information for managing your diabetes, healthy eating, healthy living, it's all there. Or if you need more of a helping hand, check out our programs and courses, which are designed to give you step-by-step -step guides about managing diabetes, your weight, and your health. So if you've been following along on the Facebook page with the community group, um, which if you're interested, you can go to facebook.com forward slash diabetes diet guide, then you'll know that in the past week I've tested positive for COVID-19. Now, in reality, this was probably inevitable because I work in the hospital, um, but it still was a bit of a shock to actually test positive. So I put the question out there as to whether it'd be useful to detail my symptom profile and my journey through the disease, and the response was an overwhelming yes. I stress that these symptoms were only my experiences. It might be completely different for somebody else. Um, so do take this as a pinch of salt because what I experience might be completely different from what you experience. That said, when I think about it, my journey is probably a lot more typical of what the disease is like for most people. And actually, when we look at the media, we're probably only reading about the worst cases. Now that's important because it gives us uh, insight into actually how serious this is and helps us then stick to the social distancing and things we should be doing in order to reduce the spread of the disease. In the same breath, that then also helps to increase the anxiety around the disease and probably doesn't help people in terms of their mental health. So actually sometimes just speaking to someone that didn't get to that point um, might be useful in terms of finding that happy middle ground between mass hysteria, not caring, and meeting us somewhere in the middle as to actually where we probably should all be um, with regards to the disease. That said, if you are in one of those higher risk groups, then obviously you need to be taking extra precautions to avoid getting COVID-19. So how does it all begin with me? So on the day of filming today, it is Friday. So I've now been off work for one week um, with a positive test coming back on the Tuesday. Now, it started last Friday when I think about it. I went into work and some of my colleagues noticed that I had a bit of a cough. Um, and, and sort of made a joke about it. And the reason they're joking about it is because they know that actually I have um, a loose sphincter at the bottom of my esophagus, getting into a bit of my medical history here. And what that does is it causes a bit of silent reflux. So actually I have a cough year round pretty much. Um, so I've actually had an endoscopy to look into that. And actually, yeah, they said the actual term is lax sphincter, which sounds a bit dodgy. But um, yeah, it just irritates the bottom of the esophagus, which causes a bit of a cough, which is why we're joking about it at work and didn't really think too much into it in terms of the symptoms because it, it was very modest. I wouldn't even say I had a cough particularly. Um, so I didn't think twice about it. And I also had my temperature checked when I got into work. That was absolutely fine. I felt fine. In fact, that morning I'd run 5K and posted my best time in two years. So there was no reason to think otherwise. Um, and actually I got through Friday with no hiccups, felt absolutely fine, no problem. It wasn't until Saturday morning around 3 a.m. that I first noticed any symptoms actually. So I woke up um, in a big chill and it was about 15 degrees outside. I had a t-shirt on, I was under the blanket and yet I was still shivering. So that, I think that's kind of like those flu-like symptoms that you keep hearing about. And then from that point onwards, it was kind of just flipping between chills and then getting the sweats and feeling quite hot. And actually that's how it was for the next couple of days actually. Um, I felt quite heady, like I had heat on my head um, and just generally feeling pretty unwell. Wasn't feeling nauseous, no diarrhea. Interestingly, I had didn't really have a cough. I didn't have a temperature as I was testing it at home. So I wasn't really ticking any of those big symptoms. In fact, I'd put it down to a dodgy take word had on the Friday. So I, hadn't, I still didn't think at this point that it was anything to do with COVID-19. I just knew that I wasn't feeling great. Um, and it was kind of like flu-like symptoms now that I think back. But at the time, it was very similar to when I'd eaten this previous takeaway. Don't ask me why I ate there again. And I actually did develop food poisoning from it. So then that was kind of Saturday and I was taking paracetamol every four hours, which was taking the edge off actually. Usually I don't respond too well to paracetamol, um, but in this instance, it was a bit of a godsend and actually it would really take the edge off. Then Sunday was very similar, feeling pretty up and down in terms of the hot and cold chills, still no cough, still no temperature. Um, so actually, again, still wasn't thinking along the lines of COVID. 
Come Monday, so it was time to make a decision about going to work, so I spoke to my boss and our clinical lead. We made the decision that actually it's probably not the best idea to come in and just see how it goes and see how I feel. In the meantime, they'd organise me a swab test to see actually if I did have COVID. Um, just to practice that sort of safer rather than sorry route. Now I appreciate most people don't have access to the test, um, so I was lucky to actually get access to that and I guess it's one of the perks of working in the hospital. Also on the Monday, well actually it kind of started on the Sunday actually. I started to experience quite severe muscle aches, but again, from years of exercise um, and injuries and things like that, I'm quite achy anyway. I mean, I'm still quite young, I'm 35 at the time of filming, um, but my back was quite sore, I had a bit of soreness in my neck, but it wasn't a complete overbody ache. I still couldn't quite decide whether or not it's because I've been laid down for a couple of days and not really been mobilizing my back, or whether actually there was some aches and pains there. And this was particularly pronounced on the Sunday and the Monday um, when I went off for the test. So then we move into Tuesday. And Tuesday actually I woke up feeling a lot better. So the um, hot and cold chills had now gone and it was actually on the Tuesday that I got a call from Occupational Health and they confirmed the positive test result. So obviously this was a bit of a surprise because again, I hadn't had a cough at this point. I hadn't had any temperature. Um, so I wasn't displaying the common signs of the disease, the things they tell you to look out for. Actually, I'd had sort of flu-like symptoms that had lasted a few days now. I knew it wasn't the food anymore. Um, and I knew that I was feeling pretty unwell, but I was still functional, still able to get up and about, do household chores. I wasn't completely bedridden. Um, I was just feeling a bit rough. I've had worse, essentially. So come the Tuesday, and actually, like I say, the hot and cold had then gone by this point. And now I was just starting to feel quite tired and quite weak. So I just didn't feel like I had any energy. It was an effort to even hold my phone and text. Um, a slight cough had started to develop, which I still got at the moment. But again, it's not something that I'd say I have a cough every now and then I just need to clear my throat. It's quite dry, um, but compared to the way it's been spoke about from other videos where they say it's an unmanageable cough. You just cannot get enough air in and you can't, um, you can't uh, just seem to clear your throat. Actually, for me, it was pretty nice, pretty normal. Um, I say coughing every 10 minutes just to clear the throat and I could always clear it as well. So I think I was dealt, I was a bit lucky in that sense. So getting that severe weakness, um, feeling pretty tired. And then actually it was on the Tuesday that I noticed that when I was going to bed, and I'm not sure if it was my wife because she was freaking me out, um, where she started reading out some of the symptoms and what day they tend to kick in. That I started to feel like almost I couldn't quite get a full breath like usually when I breathe in I feel it in here whereas it felt quite shallow um, and actually it felt like my breathing rate had increased but had she not read it out and had I not got the positive COVID diagnosis I probably wouldn't have thought twice about it to be fair. Um, for any of you that are thinking actually what am I doing in near my wife she too once I was diagnosed she too would develop symptoms on the Monday so actually then I broke my isolation out of my room um, because we both have it essentially and she's been following the same symptom part profile about four days behind me. So since Tuesday, it's been, the general trend is getting better and feeling much better, but actually it seems to go up and then it comes back a little bit and then it goes, it gets better and then it drops off a little bit. Uh, and it's not really feeling ill, but it's more actually just feeling a bit wiped out. So right now I feel like I've still got a cold without the runny nose, but there's something still there and it's still lingering, some residual disease, I guess. Um, but actually, I'm still able to get up, film this blog, still do the housework. I feel fine in myself. I don't feel sick. I don't have any temperature. The cost completely manageable now, um, even though it's still there slightly. But I found that I'm getting waves of energy and no energy. And that's been particularly worse on some days compared to others. So it really, and actually my wife has been following the very similar um, symptom profile as well actually so she's been finding that she feels fine and she wakes up the next day and she's a little off and then she's better compared even better than she was the day before and then it drops off again so I think it's a bit of a bit of a slog to get through it actually it's gonna take some time um, but actually compared to what you're reading about in the newspapers it's actually pretty mild in the grand scheme of things and I think we've really been quite lucky now one thing I really wanted to speak about and actually I think it's important to just mention is so I was quite surprised that I did test positive and that's because I didn't have any of the big symptoms. No temperature, no cough, no shortness of breath. So I was um, not thinking down the lines of COVID at all. I was being um, just 
precautionary in terms of not going to work, but then still tested positive. So I really wanna emphasize that if any of you are experiencing any of those flu-like symptoms or feeling a bit off, do not assume that it is not COVID. You do not need the cough, the shortness of breath, and, um, and the temperature in order to be positive, okay? It really shows us that everyone has a different profile of symptoms to, um, and what you think's fine might not be fine and you may be putting other people at risk. To answer the question, why was it pretty mild in myself? I guess there's a few factors. First of all, I'm just lucky. Um, it could have gone any other way with me, but actually it's been pretty manageable, feeling a bit rough, but on the whole, I'll take it. Um, I'm also still pretty young, 35 years old, so that definitely helps. But I also look after myself. I exercise five or six times a week in one respect or another, and I've been doing that for well over 20 years now. Like from teenage years of playing sport, I've kept it up and remained active throughout my entire adult life. I eat healthy. It doesn't mean that I only eat salad and rabbit food. I do enjoy a beer. I do enjoy takeouts. I do enjoy some unhealthy food. Got a massive sweet tooth. But the, my baseline behavior is eating healthy and getting active. And then anything else is just little add-ons on top when I'm being a bit naughty or just having a bit of a relaxation meal. I manage my weight quite well. I don't have any underlying health conditions. And some people have asked how my diabetes has reacted. I don't have diabetes. I just specialize in diabetes. Um, so I can't talk about it from a blood glucose response perspective in terms of my symptom profile. I do know people in the hospital, when we're treating them, the general trend is that it's pushing people's glucose levels higher than what they usually see, whether that's a um, uh, inflammation response to the disease and a stress response that's pushing up the glucose levels, or it might be a bit of dehydration to go with it. When people aren't feeling very well, they're not getting enough fluids on board, just concentrating the sugar in their blood or any other of the million different processes and reasons as to why glucose levels can rise. But generally stress response and dehydration are the two big ones when it comes to hospitalization. But for me personally, I can't comment on that. But actually, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is I look after myself. So when things like this do come around, I'm putting myself in the best position in order to get the best outcome possible. And I think that's really an important message to try and emphasize going forwards during COVID and after COVID. Now, I know people that are kind of using this as a holiday. They're drinking every day, eating crap. Um, and actually, these people are in the high risk category. What would really be nice for me as their friend and as their um, colleague or as a family member is to see them actually try and embrace this and take this almost as a bit of a uh, kick up the backside to get exercise in as much as possible, trying to eat as healthy as they can because they are high risk. And what we don't want is them to get it and bad things to come to them because um, it would be devastating. And of course, I'm sure every one of you knows someone like that. Perhaps it's you yourselves. And really, if, if there's any time to start trying to get as active as possible and looking after yourself the best way possible and staying as safe as possible, I think this COVID-19 pandemic is probably the reason to do it. Because actually, when we look back, we kind of been lucky with some of these diseases. There's been SARS and MERS and swine flu. Just since the millennium, this is probably the fourth or fifth pandemic that's actually come out. Um, but fortunately, there's other diseases haven't spread as widely or they haven't been as deadly, but any one of them could have been. And this is the first one that's really taken hold on a worldwide um, basis and really shut things down and it's a complete change to our way of life. But it could happen again in any, the, the next one could literally do this again. And so the more of these diseases that are out there, the more um, risky it is to people that aren't looking after themselves. So if anything, this is a good opportunity to really look at ourselves and try and start to look after ourselves as best as we can to reduce the risk of bad things happening, getting sick and not doing well with these pandemics. So I'll leave you with that thought. I hope that's been useful in terms of my symptoms and my journey through the disease. Um, I hope you all stay safe. Keep up with the practicing the social distancing and looking after yourselves and your families and we'll be back soon enough with new blogs and new information that I'll post on the YouTube and on the Diabetes Diet Guide blog. So I'll see you later and um, wish you all the best.